My name is Christine Assange. Is it right? Yes. I am the mother of Julian Assange, editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks, the internet whistleblower site who told the citizens of the world the truth about power in the world, about secret war crimes, about shocking human rights abuses, about widespread corruption by big business and governments. The citizens of the world were hungry for the truth and responded with enthusiasm. Millions of dollars of donations flowed into WikiLeaks coffers to keep publishing, to keep telling the truth to the world. The revelations were being discussed worldwide from the White House to the street kids in Kenya. The US Embassy cables revealed for all to see what was only whispered about. The US government was no little house on the prairie. It was not the world's benefactor. Truth and justice was not always the American way. US aid had, spring, had strings. The Haiti earthquake cables revealed that the, that the US tried to blackmail the president of Haiti over the minimum wage rise from 31 cents to, to 61. Shame. They did this straight after the Haiti earthquake, saying that their aid was tied to the prevention of that rise of the minimum wage. Shame. Shame. US offshore clothing manufacturers Levi Strauss, Strauss employed 25,000 people in Haiti who cannot live on their current wage. They threatened no reconstruction. Another part of the cable said, the gold rush is on. That was to the US reconstruction contractors. The same ones in Katrina who doubled their quotes on housing. Venezuela came to Haiti's aid. They offered them 40% reduction on their oil so that they could rebuild their hospitals and schools. The four US giant oil companies blockaded it. And Bradley Manning, what was the last straw for Bradley Manning? He was asked to turn over 15 dissidents to the Iraqi torture squad. Their crime? To, to hand out leaflets that said, where's the money gone? I can't remember whether it was 16 billion or 16 trillion dollars of US construction money went missing. When he said, no, I think this is wrong, it's morally wrong, he was told, do it and go and get some more. Iraq, children are threatened by US troops. They are told that they will be handed over to the Iraqi police and raped unless they confess. And in our own country, what was revealed about the back dealings with Mark Bibb and US intelligence? For four years he was in bed with the US intelligence, talking up Gillard as being pragmatic. Kevin wasn't. He was consulting not with the US but with the people. We now have to ask questions about why Gillard was the only person to be involved in the first political coup of an Australian, elected Australian Prime Minister. The Torres Strait Cables 2007. Under John Howard, the Liberal Party put into legislation environmental protections for the Torres Strait. As you know, it's just situated above the Barrier Reef. A pilot boat had to... Uh, the, new, the tankers coming through the Torres Strait, about 137 a year, oil tankers, gas tankers, chemical tankers, had to ring on shore uh, to get a pilot boat to navigate the strait so there would not be an environmental disaster. That didn't suit the Americans. They lobbied for it to be changed, but he held firm. When the current Labor government got in, he lobbied the, they lobbied again, but this time a deal was struck. In the cables, the ambassador or the diplomat involved said, we cannot change the legislation because if there is an oil spill, the Australian people will never forgive us. Never mind, said the Labor Party, uh, or whoever was responsible. That's all right. You can go through without a boat, and we just won't issue the uh, according penalties. Shame. 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 The US was furious at these exposés. They're embarrassed and retaliated. Unlike WikiLeaks, who operated within the law, they retaliated with illegal and immoral ways. Calls were made by US politicians to murder my son. Strangle the son of a bitch, they said. Shut down the, they shut down the WikiLeaks servers. They froze his personal bank accounts. The US-led banking blockade, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, Bank of America and Western Union shut off nearly all 
their funding. Shame. They contravened the European laws of uh, trade practices. The WikiLeaks threat. Anonymous exposed that the Bank of America's lawyers, on the advice of the US Department of Justice, had hired three data intelligence firms st uh, staffed by ex-CIA agents, HB Gary, Palantir Technology and Burrico Holdings, to smear Wiki WikiLeaks in whatever way they could. From the time that these people were employed to today, it's a tick box on what has happened to Julian and WikiLeaks. When Julian was in Sweden, inquiries from two women, merely that alone, recent testing, was elevated by political interference. Julian, to, to, to allegations that were more severe. Julian stayed in Sweden for three weeks to clear it up. They would not interview him. He was given permission to leave. At this stage, they were still minor. The rape allegation issued by the first police officer was dropped by the one above her as having no evidence. When he arrived in Britain, an immediate red notice by Interpol was issued. Gaddafi only had an orange one. They refused under the European arrest warrant rules of mutual assistance to interview Julian, either in Sweden, at the embassy, by Skype or any other means. The last 11 months, my son has had to fork out huge amounts of bail money and sureties. He has a strict curfew. He's electronically tagged, he cannot even run. He's stationed in isolation three hours outside of London in the country. The UK has unlimited funds to spend on this case for the Swedish prosecution. They've employed Claire Montgomery, a US, a U, uh, sorry, an extradition specialist who was employed by Pinochet during his extradition hearings. Pinochet murderer. The case is not being run on normal ground, on normal lines. Even Swedish judges are saying so. There have been many breaches of police and prosecutorial protocols. Many breaches of legal and human rights. The case is being condemned by the UN and Fair Trials International. Now it has reached an urgent stage for my son. Within four weeks, he could be extradited to Sweden, where he will be held incommunicado there is no bail for foreigners. He will not be allowed any visitors or even lawyer or families for indefinite time, even before charges are laid. He could be held for 12 months or longer. Many believe that the whole thing is just a holding case wait, awaiting a subpoena for an indictment from the US, an extradition. The grand jury in the US has been meeting now for some six months. US-style justice in Virginia. The Virginian jury is being convened there because the families are all the families of military and intelligence personnel, so they have a selective jury. They have four prosecutors presenting evidence. My son is not allowed to have one defence attorney presenting his evidence. It's a tick box. From Sweden, he can be rendered in a number of ways. Through the normal extradition treaty, the UK has to agree for him to be rendered on. But they've got a way around it. The US and Sweden have a bilateral treaty called temporary surrender. It's a tick box. Bradley Manning knows what this sort of torture is in a Western democracy. He's been in detention for over a year in a tiny cell, tw 23 hours of solitary, recently no. only released because of the pressure by the, by the American people. He was allowed to walk around in tiny circles, no TV, no papers, no writing equipment, no glasses, stripped naked at night, made to stand to attention for all to view in the morning with a rough smock that chafed his skin, being woken every five minutes. Da Daniel Ellsberg, from the Pentagon paper, whistleblowing era, said that his treatment was straight out of a CIA handbook of torture called No Touch Torture used to break him, to force him to incriminate Julian, to get him on, on criminal charges. Daryl Issa, US congressman, stated, if we can't get him on espionage charges, we have to get him on criminal charges. Otherwise, the world is laughing at the paper tiger we have become. I think the world is already laughing at the US. 
The rate of conviction by this method is very, very high, well in excess of 96%. It's confession by torture. And this is in a supposed democracy. This is in a country that Julia Gillard says the Americans can do anything. And I think that's what we're all frightened of. And we should be saying, no, you can't do anything. You don't have a friend down under, but Julian Assange does. The Australian government has done nothing. Gillard, the Attorney General, Robert McClellan, have merely labelled him illegal, cancelled his passport and threatened treason charges and staying, stating they would cooperate with the US no matter what. 80% of the Australian public support WikiLeaks. Numerous letters have been sent to the PM from the leading influential Australian citizens. I myself sent wrote an eight-page letter informing them of some interesting facts that they may not know. For example, please put your hand up if you know about the Sam Adams Award. Thank you, mainstream media. The Sam Adams US has come out in defence of Julian. When I got a standard letter back from Rudd, I faxed, uh, sorry, emailed that letter to every senator and every member of parliament, asking them to act upon their consciences. This was not a left or right issue. This is a democracy and free speech issue. From there, a Liberal Party member responded and convened on March the 2nd a special meeting of Parliament, to which 30 representatives attended a crossbench meeting. In that meeting, there were full diplomatic and legal briefings given by three lawyers and ambassador, ex-ambassador Tony Kevin, who concluded that Julian Assange was in clear and present danger from a US extradition which was politically motivated. The three, they all agreed that the Australian government should seek written humanitarian guarantees from Sweden and UK not to render Julian onto a US extradition as it was a political case. Gillard has re recently come out and said that she needs to be briefed on this. She was briefed by the Australian people and she was briefed in Parliament on March the 2nd and she was briefed two weeks ago by Julian's lawyer. ASIO boss David Irvine in an interview with Andrew Green on 24, ABC 24, in, an answer, uh, in a question to what do you make of WikiLeaks stated, a modern phenomenon we are all going to have to learn to live with somehow. The AFP could find no law broken, the US can find no law broken. Now we're at the ANZUS Treaty. Here we are today. I'm 60 and so is the ANZUS Treaty. It's a long, long marriage. We have grown. We are not who we were. We were a colony 60 years ago, a colony of the Commonwealth. Now is the time for us to transition to a free, independent democracy, not to transition to the 51st state of the US. This government right now has the opportunity to oversee that transition and help us come of age. 50% of the people in this country come from other countries, often fleeing those countries because they are repressive. Do you need me to wind up? Yeah, you've got plenty of time. Okay. Uh, all the time uh, <clears throat> these people now will feel that sick quiver in their stomachs as they watch what happens with the entourage and Obama coming to view his latest uh, acquisition. We are a gutless country in terms of our politicians. Yeah. 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 Even small countries like New Zealand can stand up to the US. David Long has said, no, you cannot dock your nuclear warships here. Pierre Trudeau in the Vietnam War said, this is not a just war. We will not join you. And what's more, we will offer you your draft dodgers safe haven. Bravo. If indeed we are a friend as they say, a best friend to the US. Best friends do not always agree. In fact, when your friend is going down the wrong road, a good friend taps you on the shoulder and says, mate, you're going the wrong way. I can't go with you. We're still friends, but you're going the wrong way. 70% of US citizens do not support Barack Obama. He is not living up to the First Amendment of the Founding Fathers. They are losing economic power. They should at least try to keep their moral power as a beacon for the emerging democracies in the third world. They should focus more on diplomacy than an aggressive John Wayne 
uh, approach to dealing with conflict. It doesn't work for the US and it doesn't work for us and it doesn't work for the rest of the world. We're all thoroughly sick of them. We want them to pack their bags and go home and look after their own business in the US. They're not even acting within their own self-interest. The cables revealed much about the way power works. But it also revealed that in some cases the US was doing the right thing. We're on the edge of a new change, similar to the Industrial Revolution with the internet. We have to tread very carefully in the way we proceed now with our democracies and human rights in regard to free speech on the internet. It's time for caution, not overreaction. The reaction of the US to WikiLeaks is causing them far more harm to their credibility in the world than the, than the leaks themselves. They need to step back and critically analyse they are angry and they are overreacting. They are acting like an adolescent with a hissy fit and they're expecting us to go along with it. The internet is a new way. We must uphold democracy and freedom. If they have lax security measures that lets their information out, that's their problem. They shouldn't put 20-year-old distressed people in charge of maximum security. He's only been here 24 hours and he's already had two security breaches, one major. Did you hear about the one where they left the itinerary of Obama on the front seat of one of the darkened windows for a journalist to photograph? <laughs> Stop doing things that embarrass you if you don't want to be caught out. Stop global bullying. We're told in our schools that we must stand up to bullies. This government is particularly hot on the issue. What's the problem? We're being bullied internationally. Why isn't this government standing up? I want this government to grow up. We're in the hands of adolescents. If anyone saw that nauseating display at the dinner last night, they looked like starstruck teenagers. Even Abbott. Me too. Me too. I want to be in the gang too, Pimp Obama. Taxpayer. They should be saying, we are proud of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. This is an Australian-initiated invention. We are standing up for democracy. The US, you got caught out lying. Get over it. You've lost your moral status, but you could regain it if you stood up for free speech. We are a free and independent nation. Now what are we left with? How are we going to save Julian when our government won't stand up? We can protest, but it doesn't look like it's going to work. We're just the power, I'm the power of mum. And I'm asking all of you to be the power of one and join me. On our own, we are powerless, but together, if 10 million of us marched down to our federal MPs this week and said, we can't count on you to be courageous. We can't count on you to do what's morally right but we can count on your self-interest. <laughs> that local MP, he'd like his party to be in Parliament, but hey, the main thing is as long as he had his bum on the seat to get his parliamentary pension. If we said to them, freedom of speech and democracy and human rights, and this case being symbolic of it, is more important than whether I get my broadband and my pornography faster, or any of the other issues, Julian would be protected within a week. The other, the Greens, are the only party that have stood up. The only party in the Senate last week, Scott Ludlam made a motion, a modest motion to the Senate, that they protect Julian from the bilateral treaty. That's all, not the other treaties. Not one Labor Party or Liberal Party Senator stood for it. All the Greens did. So I'd say the most important thing that you could do for my son is to vote Green next election. This is not a party political issue. I'm a swinging voter. I'm saying that because of what's happening right now. The other thing you can do, you've got the power of the dollar. You've all got credit cards. They have breached antitrust legislation in Europe. They control 98% of the credit card transactions in the world. It's a monopoly, so they have the power. But they have only the power while you give them the money to have the power. I would ask you and the people of the world, if any are listening, either 
don't use those credit cards, a Visa, Master, uh, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, Western Union or Bank of America, or limit them. Try to use your cash and let them know why and continue to protest in any way you can to save my son. Thank you.